Hi everyone! Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to this new video here. I'm Birgit from Kobasiani Sewing Patterns or Kobasiani. <laughs> this video here is um, one of the videos for my corset top charlotte, which I'm wearing here. Which is, um, as mentioned, a corset top, clearly inspired by historical corsets, but not historical accurate, of course. The pattern for Charlotte is available in all my shops if you like to sew one for yourself. The links you will find below in the description box. Charlotte has no cups, just seams here and it has got um, inbuilt some kind of bralette to give an extra support to the chest but this is also optional. And although it doesn't look like at first sight, you have really many options with Charlotte. The first, the classic option, is here what I'm wearing here with the full program. <laughs> um, I have boning, I have made three layers, I have the zipper in the side seam and I have the lacing in the back. Which is definitely nice to have to adjust the width of the corset, but it's not really necessary. So you can just saw the corset with the side seam zipper only. Here I have my cropped version for which I have made a separate video. I'm linking you this here. And I have moved here the zipper to the center front, which is also possible, as well as moving it to the center back. And here I'm showing you my comfy jersey top version without boning and a side seam zipper. For this I also made a separate video, which is also linked here. You can use the pattern as part of a dress as the waistline is drawn in on the pattern. So basically you just have to fold the pattern along this line and add one centimeter seam allowance below to link that to the skirt part. I haven't made this version yet, but as soon as I've sewn it, I will link you the video for it here. And of course there are design options which are not that obvious. Um, which have to do with the workmanship of the boning. Here for this flower corset I've chosen the option um, where no stitching neither on the outside nor on the inside on the lining layer is visible. I'm always using by the way this plastic boning um, which can be stitched on. So that means I've stitched on this plastic boning to the third layer, which is totally invisible inside. You will see that in the sewing video soon. So um, that means this is also the option which I'm explaining in this main sewing video. But of course, it's very easy to change that workmanship. For example, you can also stitch the boning to the lining layer, which I've made here. Um, I've used a normal cotton fabric for the lining, so this is no problem at all. And if you're anyways planning an outside stitching of the seams, you could also stitch the boning to the outside layer. But I wouldn't recommend this, because it's quite difficult to keep the distance of the stitching like this. Another option would be to create fabric tunnels for the boning, either visible like this or on the inside. When these fabric tunnels are made on the outside, like this here, they add a little bit more structure to the design overall, which I wanted to have for this lace corset. In this video here, we will make all the preparations um, for a Charlotte corset. That means I'm explaining the pattern, um, how the options are drawn in at, on the pattern. We're making a test corset to try it on first. We will adopt the pattern to your body shape. We will cut the fabric already and add all marks that you will need for sewing. And we will fix the interlining with the iron. This garment is definitely a sewing project which is a little bit more time consuming because of all the details. Especially if you make it with all the features which I've also made here. But I think it's worth the time. So let's start with the video, with the making process, um, part one. <laughs> let's go and have fun! 
The DNA4 file for Charlotte, by the way, is called DNA4, but is also printable on US letter size paper. And it's absolutely important that you print it out on 100% and not scale to fit to media. On the first page, there are also these control squares so that you can check if the size is correct. You can print out the pattern in color or also in grayscales. There are these numbers on the pattern and to assemble it, you just have to put the same numbers next to each other. Pages 1 to 12 you will need for all sizes and the last two pages, 13 and 14, you only need from size 46 or US 18 on. Then you bring together the pages along the dashed lines. The method depends on you. I'm cutting and gluing them together. You will see that not all pages have to be glued together. Um, I just did that to have one big pattern sheet here. And this is how it looks like in the end. Now let's have a look on the pattern. On the first sheet you will see the size chart and the control squares. And here are all the pattern pieces. As you can see I've printed out the pattern in grayscales, but you can still distinguish the different sizes. At first I'd like to show you the back middle part, here. In the center back, as you can see, there are two possibilities drawn in how you can cut this pattern piece. The first possibility is you cut it with the outline as it is, with a fold at the center back, so that means for a corset without lacing. In that case, you should also use the center back as grain line. The second possibility is that you cut your back pattern piece along this line here, which is one centimeter within the pattern. This is for the option with lacing in the center back. And in this case you should use the separate arrow which is drawn in for the grain line. Either you cut your paper pattern along this line or you just fold this one centimeter to the back. So like this you could use the pattern for a different corset later. Then we have here the back side part. Here is to say that on all edges one centimeter seam allowance is included except here at the side seam where there is 1.5 cm seam allowance. And you can see this line here where later we will stitch on the boning. The front side part is really very similar to this. We have also 1.5 cm seam allowance along the side seam and these lines here as a marking for the boning later. Along the other edge we have two important notches here. The first one here at the top is the chest notch. That means this is the point where your chest is at the highest circumference. Then you see this curve here which is bent inwards and with this notch here. This is the point under your chest. Then we have the front middle pattern piece which has the same notches equally along the dividing seam and here's the center front which normally should be cut on fold but if you'd like to move your zipper to the center front you could easily add 1.5 cm seam allowance here. Then there's the strap. Here's to say that at the back side here there are 3 cm seam allowance so later when you're trying on your corset you can very easily adapt the strap length according to your torso length. Then there's the inbuilt bralette which is totally optional of course. The back insert underneath the lacing is also optional, but I think it looks more classy with it. It will cover later this space of about 4 cm width where the center back lacing will be. When you are now choosing the size for your charlotte, please do that according to your chest measurement. If you are in between two sizes, please choose the smaller one. In this case, of course, you have to make some first small pattern adaptions. Let's say for example your chest measurement is 98 cm, which means you're in between a size 14 and 16. Then you take the pattern in size 14, which will be 2 cm too small for your chest, right? This missing width we are now dividing into 4. Then you take your pattern and you add the 0.5 cm each at the center front and center back. 
Of course, this adaption has to be made also at the inside bralette and the insert underneath the lacing if you have one. The chest area is now more or less adapted. Now you can compare your waist measurement with a chart. If there's a big difference, you can hop now in between the sizes, as I marked here in red, just according to the waist measurement, which fits you the most. But you can also just go ahead and make the adaptions after the first fitting. Now we are ready to saw our test corset. Unfortunately, I haven't filmed how I cut mine, so this video clip is only symbolic. You should really use up some tiny rests here or use some ugly fabric, which you don't want to use for regular sewing projects. The important thing is here that no matter if you want to make a lacing later, you have to cut the center back on fold. That's much easier for the fitting. And please take care of the correct grain line, because this has an impact on the, the elasticity of the fabric later. In general, the fabric for the test corset should not be elastic. We need the front and back center pattern pieces once on fold, the side pattern pieces of the front and back and the straps twice as a pair. Then I'm closing all the front and back dividing seams with 1cm seam allowance and the side seam where you don't want to have the zipper later, um, I'm closing with 1.5cm. The straps we're sewing on with an overlapping of 4cm, the 3cm which are as seam allowance on the straps and plus 1cm coming from the back pattern piece. Afterwards, I'm clipping the seam allowances and the stronger the curve is of the seam, the more I'm clipping. For example, here at the back and at, along the side seam, I haven't to clip that many times, but here around the chest area where the curve is quite strong, I'm clipping more often. Then it's ironing time, I'm pressing all seam allowances apart. And of course, I do that very carefully, only with the tip of my iron, so that I'm not destroying the shape which is now in this garment. Then I'm preparing the side seam for the zipper. At first, I'm clipping also the seam allowance a little bit, a few times, so that now it is possible to fold the side seam 1.5 cm towards the wrong fabric side and iron this. The same I'm doing on the other side. And then I'm pinning my zipper underneath this prepared side seam. The zipper is probably not yet in the correct length, but this doesn't matter for the fitting. Just take care that the zipper is completely hidden underneath the fabric, that means that the folded edges come together. Then I'm sewing in the zipper. As this seam here anyways has to be ripped later, it totally makes sense to sew it with a longer stitch length, so it will be easier to undo it. As you can see it here and later also during the fitting, my first test corsets are made in different gorgeous Christmas deco fabrics. And yes, I've put my pins in the wrong direction here. <laughs> okay, so now we are ready to try it on. My measurements are quite similar to a size in the size chart, so this is already looking quite nice. But measurements are not everything. Of course, your body shape itself is also important. I'm looking now for areas which are gaping, for example, around the neckline or here at the waist. And if the corset is overall snuggling well to my body. I think in my case, um, there's too much room here around the hem or the waist. So I'm putting in some pins to visualize how it should look like. But I already decided that I will do this changement only for this specific corset with the lacing, which I'm planning to do for the video here, but not for all corsets which I ever saw with this pattern here. 
I know tight corsets really look nice but um, I don't like it to be too tight around my belly area because I easily get sick then. So this will only be a temporary changement for this corset with lacing because there I anyways have the possibility to change the width. The rest looks nice so I'm going ahead like this. But as different materials behave differently, you should really try on your Charlotte corset during the sewing process as much as possible to control and to check on the shape. This for example is a problem which I only found out later when I made my first Charlotte with boning. But here at the tip of my chest there seems to be a little bit too much fabric. This is something I would change now in general for my personal Charlotte corset pattern. So that's what I'm doing here. The area which I showed you in the last clip is here along the upper notch, um, the notch for the chest. So I'm just reducing the pattern here for around 3 mm only on each side. That means in total there is 6 mm less of fabric. And as I found later on my flower corset, um, this looks already much nicer. Apparently my body shape is here a little bit flatter than the standard body shape um, for which the pattern is made. So you're seeing here now the same video clip like before, but this time it's correct. I'm cutting now my main fabric here, which is an African wax print. And I'm taking my time to get the grain line right. Also the center back pattern piece, I'm now not cutting on fold as before for the test corset, but as it should be in two pieces um, for the version with lacing. By the way, in the written sewing instruction, you will find a cutting suggestion for different fabric widths and for different kind of fabrics. I'm cutting here, by the way, the center and the side parts of each, the front and the back, the straps and also that pattern piece which will be under the lacing later. This you don't see here in this video clip. If you'd like to have a really stiff and supportive corset like me here in this video, you should cut all pattern pieces also in an interlining. I'm using here the H250 from Bailene. This is an interlining which is a little bit stiffer. If your main fabric is already stiff enough, you can also uh, skip this step. For example, I've done so for my cropped lemon corset. Then I'm cutting the fabric which is for the lining. The fabric here is not really a lining fabric but I'm just using it as it is soft and a little bit thinner and it matches nicely to my main fabric. As you can see it here and on the pattern of course there are no specific lining pattern pieces. You just cut all layers with the same pattern pieces. In the lining we just additionally need the pattern piece um, for the inside bralette. Then I'm making the temporary adaption at the side seam which I've pinned before during the fitting and I'm just measuring how much I have to reduce at the side seams at my current corset. As you can see I'm measuring the width and the height of this pleat. Here I'm transferring this to my cut pattern pieces and I'm starting here with the front side pattern piece. I'm just putting all on top of each other and then cutting the amount of fabric which I've measured before. And the same happens to the back side pattern piece. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, I also have to transfer this changement on my third layer, which will have the boning later. Either you can use your test corset for this third layer, if you want to sew one, or you cut it um, again in another fabric. Okay, so now off to the last preparational step before we start sewing. Here I'm ironing on the interlining. Make sure that the gluing side of the interlining is pointing to the wrong fabric side. Then cover everything with a cotton cloth and then you iron it at medium heat without steam. And I'm ironing each area for about 8 to 10 seconds. And I also like to press it again for safety reasons <laughs> um, from the right fabric side, like this. Then I'm adding all necessary marks. Here I'm marking the end of the darts at the inside bralette. For that I've made a small hole into the paper pattern and through this hole I can draw my marks onto the wrong fabric side. Please also don't forget to transfer all the notches which are along the outlines of the pattern pieces. When the fabric quality is allowing this, um, for that I'm just cutting tiny V's along the fabric edge. Then I'm marking the lines for the boning on the third fabric layer. These are on the side parts of each, the front and the back. This you can do with a normal pencil, as you won't see it anyways later. By the way, I messed up my test corset, um, which I don't show in the video, um, so I couldn't use it as a third layer and I had to cut it in a new fabric. This is why the beautiful Christmas pieces had to go. Now on the back insert, underneath the lacing, I'm marking now the center back on the main fabric, um, on the right fabric side, and also um, the lines where the back parts will end later. That means I'm transferring all three lines on the paper pattern onto the fabric. The first steps are done. I hope you found the video helpful. Leave me a thumbs up here on YouTube, this helps me a lot and subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to see more creative content from my side, um, you can follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook mainly. This will also help us to grow the community. So here somewhere is already linked the part two of making the Charlotte corset, so you can directly continue watching it and making your corset. Bye, see you soon.